Hi guys, welcome to another video by Antiques Arena. My name is Walter O'Neill and today I'm going to show you some stock haul again. Um, been down to Bessemer Road, Cardiff just over a week ago and had some absolutely beautiful pieces and I'm still making films from it because I had so much stuff um, and I've selected some absolutely stunners for you today. Stay tuned and see what I got. Okay, just quickly before we get going guys, if you love antiques, collectibles, you're in the reseller business, then don't forget to subscribe because my channel's all about how-to videos. I go out buying antiques and I show you what everything's worth and how to identify it. So state your claim guys, make sure you subscribe. If the videos help you and you like them, I would really appreciate a like and a share to help me keep creating videos. Let's get to it. Okay, welcome back. We're going to start off with one of my favourite topics, which is Militaria. Um, and I've bought a pair of trench art vases. Now, the shell casings, normally if you look underneath, they will have a series of stamps and telling you the dates. If you look here, this one is dated 1917. And... This one here is dated 1918. But these are actual shell casings, um, the rounds would have come out of. Anyway, as a pair of casings, not very exciting, pretty boring to be honest with you. I see shell casings all the time and you probably get five or 10 pound each from. Maybe 20 if it's a good heavy caliber. But these ones, both exactly the same, are engraved. 1914 to 1918 they have a selection of flowers and the piece of both of them are exactly the same they got two doves two flowers on each and the date so they made trench art made to commemorate the end of the war they're absolutely gorgeous And these are done period guys, so somebody who was actually serving actually done these at the end of the war. So really nice, nice quality as well to the uh, engraving there. I say engraving, it looks more like it's been hammered in with a nail, but same thing. But really, really nice. So, we got a pair of these. Now they cost me £15 for the pair. And to be honest with you, I thought that was a steal. I really did. I see them anywhere from 50 to 100 and I think I'm being cheap. But we'll have a little look now on eBay, see some sold prices. The downside with eBay, over the years, I've tried to sell stuff like this. <coughs> and eBay's policy is you can sell trench art, but it has to be altered from its original form. I'd have trouble selling these on eBay because they're still a shell casing. Don't ask me what difference it makes. They can't be reused. They've been fired. You know, yeah, it's eBay. But in eBay.com in America, they can sell anything they like. It's just not fair. Anyway, let's have a little look. See what sort of monies these pull on eBay. Okay, so I've just searched trend chart. That is all I have searched, and I've gone sold listings, highest price, UK only. Because overseas, there's so much stuff is shocking. So, let's have a little look at some of the prices and some of the things that uh, are actually available. As you can see, some of this stuff is quite impressive, considering. Now, how the hell they've sold that lot, I don't know. They've just put it down as relics and got away with it. You can see rounds there with the fuse still on top of them. They're going to be decommissioned. But still, and they got the SRD, which is the Service Rum Division, uh, or Service Ration Division, rather, as a rum bottle. I got one of them to film next week. You got some trench art lighters. And be careful with lighters, guys, because you can't ship them anymore either. Anything that's ever held petrol can't go in standard mail anymore overseas. So, just giving you an idea of some of the things you can get in uh, this country for trench art. A 
lots of skulls made and aeroplanes and that. Now this one, I don't know how the hell they've sold that one again. Uh, they've lied, they have lot. They've put it down as a trench art paperweight or relic. But how the hell they're getting away with it, I don't know. But if anybody reports them, they'll get thrown off eBay. It's not worth the risk. But as you can see, trench art pulls really good money. There's a pair there of World War I trench art shell casings engraved with Chinese dragons. £161. Pair casings there. What have they sold them as? Brass vase design. World War I trench art. Well, I don't know how they got away with selling them. Because I had a strike when I tried selling just plain vases that hadn't been altered. Good price, mate. Fair enough with those because they've been crimped in and then altered. But again, good price. There's page after page after page of this stuff, obviously. And the price come, goes up and all the way down. I may have to have a little look just to check whether eBay's policies have changed because there's a lot of people getting away with selling standard vases and altered. Because if they could go on eBay, I'd get a lot more money from So anyway, there you go. That just gives you a rough idea of some of the trench art prices, guys. It's a subject that pulls really good money. I had one of them before as a snuff box. Either way, I think you'll agree they're a beautiful item and they're going to really go well in the shop. They're going to look beautiful. They're not going to stay in the shop for long. Um, they'll sell out pretty fast, as will the next item, but this one's an eBay item. Now, it's a miner's twist box or snuff box, tobacco box. But what's rare about this one is it's named, it's got its location and it's got its date. So we have John Evans from Cum, dated 1898. What a really, really nice little twist box, miner's twist box. Now I paid good money for this. This didn't come in for nothing. Um, I think it worked out 20 pound I paid for this one. So it didn't come in for nothing. I bought this with a few miner's lamps, which I'm gonna put in another film. But I've allocated 20 pound of the bill for the twist box really really nice and you'll have a shot at some of the prices now you watch this okay some people are calling them a snuff box others are calling them a tobacco box others are calling them a twist box but I'm gonna start here at the dearest dated 1907 uh, Thomas Pontebirum minus snuff box 127 pounds and that's what it is guys very similar to what I got, except I haven't got the border in. There's another one underneath it. Do you know, I may open up a couple of these just for you to have a quick look. Hang on. Let's open this one. Let's open this in. Again, just so you can see the pictures. Bloody eBay's a pain in the ass with the advertising eye. So, okay, quite a nice one again, lots of uh, squiggly lines and things, but basically it's the same uh, thing as what I got there. They had £113. Now, they come in a variety of forms. I've had them before now with three locks as a combination lock, and they pulled really good money. Again, standard ones, very similar to what I got, £18.94, £86, £85. Anything dated pulls money, guys. It really does. Again, another one there, £82. That's 1905. There's a plain one there. That's an Overman. Uh, £74. So you can get an idea of the prices. 75 75 You can see they pull good money. Now... How do you know the difference between a reproduction and an original? That's an original. Look at the colour difference, it's everything. That's a reproduction. Somebody's obviously used it, but that's a repro. 
on an original. On the surface they look similar but they're not. There's little slight changes and things where this one's cheaply stamped and obviously you've got the dragon on top saying Cymru rather than the name and the date and things. So there you have a real one and you have a fake one. The fake one's £12, real one year is going to be £80, £90. Sticking with the mining theme guys, um, an old gentleman was again in Bessemer Road and he pulls out first of all a Russian hat, a military hat and I thought well I did on sell for fortunes but I bought it off him. And then I bought someone else off him and a couple of other things. Next thing you know, he says, do you know what? I got a lot of badges in there. Would you like to see them? I said, oh, yeah, please. And he pulls out a lot of badges and I start buying his badges at 50p in a pound. And then he turns around and says, oh, I got some checks now as well. Let me get them. And he goes and pulls out three coal mining checks. Now, these are Mindy Colliery and the Ocean Coal Company Limited. All three of them are the exact same. Now normally you find these checks in brass. Uh, but these are like an alloy. Now they cost me a pound each. He charged me a pound each for the three checks. Now <clears throat> I'll show you the only one for this coal mine that I can find at the price. And I've actually, because I couldn't find the price for these... Uh, alloy ones I can find a price on a brass one I've listed it or oh, I listed one of them last night at £12 which has already taken a bid so already I'm guaranteed pretty much £12 each um, this is the one I listed last night CMA I'm going to list them one at a time uh, keep supply and demand down keep price high if I listed all three of them now then they'd have three to bid on and they, they wouldn't be oh so desperate so List one at a time because Welsh uh, coal mines are very desirable and collectible. Now, the, as I said, there's one brass one on. You can buy these alloy checks, don't get me wrong, for £2, and £1.50 and £2 for English mines. But to find Welsh ones, it's quite rare. So, Welsh seems to pull a lot more money at the moment. Don't know why. But have a little look. I'll show you the prices um, this coal mine is achieving. And... I'll show you the check I listed last night. Stay tuned. Okay, there's the three checks, guys. Okay, just for you to have a quick closer look at them, better than me holding them. But if I come up here, this is the one I listed. Sorry, I had the wrong check, but that's mine. You can see my seller ID by there, Antiques Arena Clearance. Listed it last night at £12. I've already had two bids. All right, it's still on £12. We've had two bids. So, obviously... The bidder has excited and increased his bid. So he's obviously willing to pay more than the £12. Now, there's none currently on for this Ocean Coal Company uh, of Mindy. Right. This is the only one sold. One result for the Ocean Coal Company check. Single result. Now, this is a brass one. But £59.15 for one check. So, you can see now why I've put them on auction, not put them on a buy it now, because I genuinely couldn't price them. Okay, next piece I got, guys, is a bit of mid-century glass, um, about 1960s, and we have a piece of Whitefriars. Now, this is called a Tumbler Vase, and it's by Marriott Powell. And you can see this wavy swags through the glass. It's in a ruby red, has the typical polished or ground and polished pontal mark that you find on white fryers. You find that on near enough all white fryers, as far as I know, or all the ones I've come across. It's in lovely condition. This is an eight inch tumbler bars. They do come in a variety of sizes. Now this one cost me £12 in Bessemer. Really nice bars, and to be honest, I'm happy enough with the price of £12. I got a big following for White Friars Glass at the shop here and this one's probably not going to go on eBay for a while. I'll put her in the shop first. If it goes in the shop, great. If it doesn't, then I'll bang him on eBay and wrap him up. But um, I like White Friars. I miss the days when I used to go out and I'd buy a coffin vase for a pound or a drunken bricklayer for three quid. You know, I miss them days. 
one of my best buys was uh, I bought a hooped vase giant one up in uh, Ebervale Carbutel when that was running years ago and I think I only paid two pound for that and had hundreds for it ah uh, that was a day so we'll have a little look now what the uh, white fryers tumbler vase is a pollen stay tuned okay so I've just searched white fryers tumbler vase highest price UK only and obviously done the work for me here Marriott Powell but if you go to 20th century factory glass or studio glass on eBay, uh, on eBay on Google there's a full encyclopedia on glass Let me see if I can get it two seconds so if you just type 20th century glass did it is is that it yeah there it is but there guys right 20th century glass this covers all the glass I think pretty much throughout the world right you got a glass shop or you got the encyclopedia if you got the encyclopedia right you can scroll down and you just pick the make of glass you want click on it and it'll give you all the pattern names the numbers who designed it everything all right but hang on, let me just back up just for you to have the uh, address there it's 20th century glass.com encyclopedia okay so now there we have it very top one same color as mine uh, mid-century white fryers red glass wave tumbler marriott powell 30 pounds uh amber one 12 15 20 pounds somebody sold one for 80 so happy days that was a streaky one I'm not going to go into all the white fries because you can see there's so many of them I specifically searched for a tumbler vase so that was alright guys there's a good profit to be had on that okay um, now you all know that I'm trying to learn the subject of Chinese porcelain and it's been going on for quite a few years with myself now but I am slowly but surely finding examples whether they're damaged or perfect to have as a collection I get them, I date them or with a bit of help sometimes I date them and authenticate them and I'm making myself up a very good catalogue of fragments or pieces or articles and the books I've got a large collection coming I've got a few hundred pieces of period 18th century Chinese now and quite a few very expensive books anyway um, again same buyer as the White Friars. I bought an 18th century Chinese Imari plate. Now this predates 1740. So this is a very early plate. Now how can you tell? There's a number of reasons. First of all you have what's known as the brown dressed rim. Which was done to simulate the bronze rim, the bronze rim from the Ming dynasty. Uh, you see here it's decorated underneath. They stopped doing that about 1740. If you look at the shape and the foot, it's uh, typical of the early 18th century. And if you see this sort of skin tone color on the porcelain, again, early 18th century. So this is, to all, to all um, in pur purposes then, 1730, 1740 in date. Chinese porcelain is cracked. It's got a hairline and a chip running down there. Couldn't give a monkey. Cost me a pound. Should still ring. So, here's another beautiful piece of Chinese porcelain to go with my catalogue in and my um, studies. You'd be surprised, it's actually quite nicely painted. When you start looking, when you look at it like that, it looks nothing. But when you actually start getting close in and look at the detail on the clouds and things, it's really nicely painted. It's a really nice plate. Normally on the later ones a cloud will just be a squiggle line. This is drawn in with the swirls and the shading. And what you gotta know with the early Chinese is to us half the time we looked in we go, it looks really amateurish drawn, but it's not. What they go for is the natural flowing uh, look in the painting. Rather than the stiff painting. So this is a really nice plate. It's not worth a lot of money, guys. It cost me a pound. It's probably worth 20 quid, if that, um, especially in this condition. But it's a nice example, and I was over the moon to buy it. Really was. 
not going to bother show you them on eBay. Chinese porcelain, guys. I tell you what, there's a few different uh, sites. One I, I pay an a, a annual membership to is gotheborg.com. Brilliant site. Uh, run by Jan Eric Nilsson. And I tell you what, that is... What, what a good site. What a source of reference. And genuinely, it's a site that's non-commercialized, so you can't go on there, value stuff, and then sell it and use them as a reference or nothing like that. And you can only talk about pieces you own. But if you want to learn the subject, that's one. Another is Peter Coombs on YouTube. I've been subscribed to him for a while now, and he does videos, bidamount.com, and he, uh, he shows you what's good on eBay, what's fake on eBay, what's good going through the auctions, and talks about Chinese porcelain in general, what to look for, and things like that. So that's a good one. Peter Coombs on YouTube, or bidamount.com, he has his own forum, again, for Chinese porcelain. It's a very hard subject, guys. Chinese been making porcelain for 2,000 years. When you consider we've been making proper, true porcelain since 1750s, you know, there's no real comparison, is there? So, and I tell you what, it's one of the hardest things I've ever had to learn. But I'm slowly but surely picking it up, and I absolutely adore this plate. So, remember what I said. Brown dress rim, the foot, the shape, the colour, the, the skin tone colour, everything. Colour of the glaze. The way it's painted, the free form, and look in detail at the quality of the paintings. Is it shaded? Is it stiff drawn? And things like that. So, that's the Chinese porcelain. Moving on. God, it's a rare beastie. It's an old porcelain fairing. Now, they used to give these away as prizes. Now, this one is called 12 Months After Marriage. Absolutely adore it. He came in yesterday, and I only give a pound for it because he's lost his hand. I'm absolutely devastated. I'm going to go through the box and pray that the hand is there because it's quite a clean break and a new break. And it's lost a little knob off top here. If you can look this side, you can see a little dollop. There's no one this side. It's just been filled in. But that was a very rare fair in his, in his day. Now, I still like it. And I still think it'll sell for 10, 20 pounds somewhere on there, even with the damage, it's still worth a bit of money. It's not worth fortunes, but if somebody hasn't got this model, they'll buy it. Now there are fakes of fairings out there, so be careful. But I'm going to show you some of the prices for genuine fairings now on eBay. Alright, you have a little look and you'll be shocked. Okay, all I have searched is a porcelain fairing. I've done highest price and I have done ended. So this is only sold things. You got the pig there with all the piglets, three hundred and sixty-seven pounds. You got a Victorian German porcelain fairing of a match striker, three hundred and one. A Victorian German porcelain fairing Cupid's watching, two hundred. You got a little pig money box. Pig down a well, 117. Look at these prices, guys. Uh, two different views. That's what that one's called. 111 pound. I bet you didn't expect to see these prices still. And these are recent sales. 100 pound for a pay, 100 pound for a pay, 76 pound for a single. Between two stools. Mr. Frog, £72. Oh, trinket box. You get the idea, guys. These fairings are real good money, but be very careful. If I go to the end, I've no doubt there'll be some fakes on there. Let me go to the cheapest. Guarantee you somebody's going to be selling fakes on eBay. There you go. Modern fairings, look. £6.50. Again, £5. They've put that down as Victorian. I'd be very surprised if that's Victorian. It just looks wrong. If I was a Victorian fairing, it'd be pulling good money. So just be careful, okay? There's a lot of fake fairings out there. But if you can get a real one, they're good money. And I can tell you now that this is a real one. It's absolutely stunning. I'm just gutted about his hand off by there. And you can see that little note off the top. So you can have a good look at what you're looking for. You can tell off the porcelain, the age of the porcelain, and the painting, and the colours of the paint. 
It's a nice subject matter too, to be honest with you. My final piece for this video is a bit of a question mark piece. Now, it was sold to me as a car mascot and bought out of a car garage. But I don't know if, if it's been homemade or if it is genuinely a car mascot. Looks almost like a pharaoh with the long beard. Now, it's made of some sort of alloy. And the truth of the matter is, I have no idea. I haven't done no research on it yet. It's just come in. Come in off the same dealer as the white fries and the Chinese porcelain. And I paid a fiver for it. Now, it could be something that somebody's just knocked up in a shed. I truthfully, 100% don't know. But I think it's quirky and I like it and it's different. So if it turns out to be a car mascot, car mascots can pull anything from a tenner up to £2,000. I've sold the Lalique nude uh, through Christie's in London and I had two and a half thousand for that. And I've sold Jaguar ones for 20 quid in the Chrome. So it's hit and miss. Just as a curiosity as a paperweight, it's got to be 20 quid, 25 quid. But if it turns out to be a car mascot, then it's probably going to be closer to 50, 60 pounds. I just think it's a quirky, unusual item. Really like it. If anyone knows what it is, you feel free to comment and uh, leave some advice. If, it, As I said, if it turns out to just be a machine workshop experiment or um, project, so be it. But it is still a really unusual thing. It will sell no problem at all. And it's got a nice little bit of patina on it. So it has got age. So that's about it, guys, for today's video. Uh, some really interesting pieces and some really good pieces as far as I'm concerned. The trench art's amazing. The Miner's Snuff Box is amazing. The 18th century Chinese porcelain for a pound. Oh, please, give me more. Guys, I'm going to leave it there. If you've enjoyed the video, I would really, really appreciate a like and a share. Uh, leave a comment if you like. Let me know which ones you like or uh, what you collect. And uh, hopefully I'll try and include some of them in future videos for you. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye for now.